so, that escalated rather quickly. I've been saying my thank yous everywhere, and I'm going to say it again, and again, and again. Thank you. Here's the thing. Y'all have left a ton of comments, more than any other video I've posted, and I have responded to some, but not all. So rather than just reply to each comment one by one, or writing a literal novel of a response, we're going to reply to all of them right here, right now. A video reply per se, because I'm old enough to remember those. I'm also doing this as well because while I am extremely happy with how the video turned out, there are some flaws and missteps with it that should be pointed out, corrected, and updated. So let's dive in and let's start with the most vocal segment. A good 30, maybe 35% of the comments were quite shocked and even angered by my thoughts on over G fighters. At the time, I was seeing it more as an Ace Combat clone because, well, look at the intro cutscene the structure of the menus, briefings. Look at the damn box. It's so desperate to be Ace Combat, it doesn't even make mention of the word Sim anywhere. Though to clarify and hopefully quell some of those fans, let me say this. I am American. I live in California, which is like the Chipotle of the States. We have places like San Francisco. D don't go there. Berkeley, Sausalito, Sacramento, and many other better places to go and see. Seriously, don't go to San Francisco. My point is that Americans are not familiar with Over G because it was part of a franchise called Energy Air Force, which was released for the PS2. Energy Air Force and its sequel Aim Strike was a series that garnered a small following of air sim people. It was praised for being realistic and grounded compared to the competition at the time. And while there were other air sims out there, barely any were made for consoles. And that's great. Why didn't I hear about this franchise before? At the time when PS2 games were being sold, I did browse my local GameStop, my EB Games, my mall which had both a GameStop and EB Games just down the hall from one another. Why do I have no memory of even seeing these games? Energy Air Force was released for Europe and Japan only. Over G is the only game in the series that got a US launch. I think it's fair to say I should have done a little more research into this game, but I'm also blaming Ubisoft for pulling this bait and switch tactic. Some of you were very helpful in telling me to look up more into this franchise. Look at this fine person, for example. They redirect my thoughts into treating Over G like a sim rather than anime dogfight game 2001. And look at these comments. I'm interested because of the positive experiences these people had and just pointing me in the right direction of how they view the game. Hell, there were even people who were confused like me on why is it called Over G when it is part of the Energy Air Force games. That being said, some of you were more critical. I understand your despise to the over G fighters, much like people prefer the movie Ford v Ferrari over watching the documentary series about the real Ford v Ferrari because the former has Matt Damon and Christian Bale. Jokes on you, I, though I want to, still have never seen Ford v Oscar bait and I've watched the documentary twice. That's a point for me. This is a points game now. Put put it on the board. This dude complained about Over G because it was more realistic and too hard for him. Lol. I actually complained more about the mission structure, bad voice acting, hard crashes of my 360, and how Ubisoft fucking lied about what the game actually is. It hurt to see you slander Over G. Although the campaign is eh, I believe it is better than Hawks. That that's not a high bar. Hawks' story is more transparent than water. I cannot believe the over G slander. The game has its flaws, but it's far from the dumpster fire you make it out to be. Over G Fighter 
is no Ace Combat clone, you fruitcake, and I never had any issues with this game. It was a hardcore sim on console. Were you just power fisting the spacebar when writing this? As an OverG fighters vet, oh, all of God. your problems are skill issue. Was just about to type this out. Thanks for saying it. But just so the clowns in the back didn't hear, I'll type it anyways. You should have added a winky face. Skill issue, skill issue, skill issue, skill issue. I do agree with the skill issue, though at the time my mindset was still focused on hoo <laughs> ace combat bunk bunk. If I changed my mindset, then I'd probably do better. Let's just round things up with OverG because this is going to be a large part of the video. I agree that the game itself is not an Ace Combat clone, but rather a name that Ubisoft bought and tried to sell as an Ace Combat clone. I agree that, at the time, was more akin to something like DCS that provided something like that for consoles at the time. Kind of similar to how people see Operation Flashpoint as Arma for the 360. But, I still think the game is a rushed mess that loves to crash out. I still think it's painfully slow. Not the jets, just getting through the UI is just painful. If you have fond memories or still play over G to this day, more power to you. I'm happy for you. It's just the experience I wasn't looking for, especially for this video. The next issue was the no-name developer section, or rather, just one of them. Totally games. I'll admit, I'll put my hands up on this one. They certainly were a major factor when it came to the air arcade genre, and to call them a no-name developer is a dick move. I should have mentioned Novologic or Microprose instead. Where were you? Where were you when I was doing this research? I will say that while Totally was indeed impactful and important to the genre, they did end up struggling at the end. Knights of the Decaden was cancelled, then followed up by making a bunch of nothing burger games. We should remember them for their accomplishments. And if I were able to change one thing from the original video, it would be that in particular. Some of you also pointed out this moment in the video. It's been able to remain relevant just by its loyal fanbase and insane moments that make the waves. Whereas every other attempt to grab a piece of that pie has either failed or is on life support. Yeah, this part did not make a lot of you happy. I should have put in something like Red Wings or literally anything else in that segment. The focus for me at the time was to play through all of, or some, the Ubisoft flight games rather than anything else. There were other games I wanted to play for the video, but I felt like I was running out of time. Even though YouTube isn't my career, yet, I do like to be on a schedule where I can upload videos more consistently preferably one or two videos every 30 days. But sometimes life gets in the way and derails that schedule. And then moments like the Days Gone video happens where it goes way beyond schedule. It also didn't help that I got COVID for the first time during the production of the UB Combat video, which is why my voice sounds really hoarse at certain points. So again, I'm sorry how that was communicated. In fact, recently I did install and play Project Wingman for the first time since all it was doing was collecting digital dust and holy shit this game slaps. The gunplay, the plot, the graphics and the art style, the details and battleships, the voice acting, when you blow up shit the plane sh shakes and Sorry, sorry, got excited. Yeah, it's really good. You, sh you should play it if you haven't already. I just want more and I want to see this new one called Frontline 59 that looks super cool. Oh come on! There were some comments about the YF-12A in the Hawks segment, primarily that the YF-12A was truly the combat ready version of the SR-71. The only reason why it's more recognized as the SR-71 is because the YF had so many issues that it prevented it from being an interceptor, so the focus was to use it as a reconnaissance plane instead. Thank you, plane nerds. May you be nearby to explain to someone how the fuck Fat Albert doesn't just fall out of the sky. For the most part, you guys were really positive about it in general, and some of you opened my eyes to elements in these games that were not clearly explained or even hinted at in the menus. It's wild to see that so many of you played most of these games mentioned. That being said, some of you were really funny. This annoying YouTuber kept talking over the Discord notifications. Five out of seven. First off. 
I'm a YouTuber? Oh. As a thank you, here's some more Discord notifications. Can you tell which ones are yours and the ones that are mine? Can you? Can you tell? Can you tell? Can you tell which ones? For real, sorry about that. That was my phone and my dumb butt forgot to mute it. Did you just pronounce scheme as sheem? I did. When my brain full of thinking becomes overwhelmed, I slur my speech. Welcome new subs to the mispronounce-a-thon that is this channel. Ubisoft had an Ace Combat style game on the PS3, Xbox 360 with the Hawks Hawks 2 games. It, y yeah. Y yeah, I know. Did you not see the video? The chapters? Is this just, wait, is this, is this just a big gaslight? That's what this, it's just a big gaslight. Hawks is better solely for the reason it's not a cuck station sellout. Can someone explain to me what that means? Can you or someone explain to me what that means? You little shit. I can't believe no one is mentioning all the Discord pings in this video. No, they have. Here's some proof. Here's some more. And more. You're really hitting me in the feels with that skull emoji. TBH, Tom Clancy Hawks was one of the good one. Doubt. Mediocre video from- Hold on, wait guys, I, I need to grab my monocle. Give me, just, just give me a second. Give me a second. <clears throat> Mediocre video from an exclusively console player and doesn't understand PC gaming. All of your woes for the graphics and backwards compatibility can be solved if you buy the games for PC. I still play Heroes of the Pacific and the graphics are awesome in 1080p since I use a PC. Get off your Xbox and learn to use PC games. They still hold well for their age. <laughs> oh man, th this guy, this guy's got me good. I've only been playing PC games for roughly 13 years and built my computer twice. You know, you know you're right, you're right. I should just buy the PC versions. That's sensible. I love this guy. Heroes of the Sky is a better version of this game with PvP. I didn't know that TV shows have PvP now. That's sick. So, a studio called Transmission never shifted gears. You did it. Why aren't you my writer? You know? I, I, I usually come up with the joke, but that's that that's that that's like classic. Blazing Angels 2 and especially Heroes of the Pacific are probably the kinds of World War II arcade flyers. This comment leaves me in suspense because of the kind of World War II arcade flyers part. We will never know what he's trying to say. Are they the best? The worst? We will never know. Don't even think about fixing it, Hash Brown. I want the mystery. See, this guy gets it. It was a setup for a drinking game all along, completely planned ahead. I'm smart. Live it up to Ubisoft to have a quest marker to handhold you on how to avoid missiles. Oh my god. Why are you talking in slow motion? You know, you're right. I'm sorry. In fact, it's time for a JK Productions trademark sudden game playthrough. What's up guys, we're gonna be playing Shadow War. Um, this is part six of my 20,000 part playthrough of uh, Shadow of War. I remember Hawks is an amazing game, but also I was... <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> In all honesty, I'm just happy that so many of you got to share your thoughts and just watch that video and hopefully this one too. YouTube, especially for the new creators, doesn't really tend to push out our videos that well. So when a video reaches 100,000 views, it's a big deal. Thank you, again, for the support. If another video blows up like that one again, I might do another one of these videos. If you like it, let me know. Our regularly scheduled programming will resume in the next video.